Japan has finally opened up again, so now is the perfect time to start planning your next visit there. But as a Gundam fan, there are so many possible places to go and visit that it can be difficult to see the forest for the trees. So here is my pick of 10 places that you absolutely have to visit as a Gundam fan if you're going to Japan's capital, Tokyo. And when you say Tokyo as an anime fan, you say Akihabara. But don't underestimate how long you'll be able to spend in this one place. If you're going to dig through every single store, you could easily spend weeks there and you still wouldn't have seen everything. Ask me how I know. But one of the best buildings you can visit there is the famous Radio Kaikan. And it is famous for a good reason. Rather than one big store, it's 10 floors filled to the brim with all kinds of different stores. Going from card stores, to doll stores, to gachapons, to model kit stores, and even brand name stores like Yellow Submarine and Amiami. Basically, this building manages to capture the amazing microcosm that is Akihabara in an even smaller space. Also making this the perfect place to visit if you want to speedrun Akihabara. But be sure to take your time visiting all of the different stores because you can find some really cool secondhand treasures here. Especially if you also have a look at the display cases. Now these are small cases that people can rent out and use to sell their own stuff. It's kind of like a physical Craigslist or Facebook marketplace, except you can see the real condition of the item, you don't have to worry about getting robbed, and the stuff there is actually good and decently priced. And close by the Radio Kaikon, we have our second must-visit store, the G-Store. And unlike the Radio Kaikon that boldly advertises itself and basically cannot be missed, this store can be more difficult to find in the flashy Akiba jungle. Partially because you have to enter through a different store. But once you find it, you'll be treated to all of the anime apparel and character goods your heart desires. T-shirts, mugs, keychains, and even full-on cosplays can all be purchased here. And while I'm recommending that you go to the store as a Gundam fan, you might be surprised what other series they're also selling things for. Staying in Akihabara, we have another favorite of mine, Mandarake. You have to go a bit deeper into the district and into a side street to find it, but you shouldn't have any problems locating the giant red sign even from the main street. And with its 8 floors filled with any kind of anime goodies you can imagine, you really do not want to miss out on this store. Every floor has its own dedicated theme, with the 8th floor being the dedicated Gundam and Mecha floor, but do not let this fool you. Every single floor has something Gundam related that you can find on it, except for maybe the first floor, which is mostly the tax-free counter. But on every other floor, you'll find anything Gundam related you can think of. Gunpla, Gundam cards, Gundam action figures, expensive Gundam action figures, Gundam video games, Gundam doujin, both for male and female audiences, and so, so much more. And with an ever-rotating stock, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that this is one of my favorite stores to visit. I also don't think I've ever left without at least buying something, so enter at your own risk. And now for something somewhat less shopping oriented. The Tamashi Nation Store Tokyo, that is also located in Akihabara. And while it might have store in the name, the largest portion of this building is actually dedicated to showing off the latest and greatest Gundam action figures and anime. And as you've guessed from the name of the store, 
their focus is of course on the action figures from the Tamashi Nation's brands. Being their flagship series like Metal Build Robot Spirit slash Robot Tamashi and Metal Robot Spirit slash Metal Robot Tamashi. But also things like the Gundam Universe figures or figure arts. You can see all of these in really cool displays ranging from past releases to upcoming releases and then add in some freebie papers to take, cool dioramas and Gundam advertisements playing and you've got a store with a great Gundam atmosphere that you just have to take a look at. And the styling of the store is also great. And of course you can also purchase some of those amazing Tamashi Nations figures here. Just be careful that you don't bankrupt yourself. Also, even though the store is mostly Gundam, you can also find other Tamashi Nations figures here. And while you're running from store to store, you might also come across multiple stores of a chain called Tsurugaya. And rather than being one big store, these stores are more spread out with every store specializing in one or more things that are clearly advertised on the outside. For example, there is a Surugaya near the station that has anime goods, idol goods, outlet goods, anime CDs, anime illustrations, doujinshi, and adult DVDs. But a bit further, you'll find one with a dedicated Gumpla floor. And believe me when I tell you that the selection was positively overwhelming. If there is a specific Gumpla that you're looking for, be it old or new, this single store will have the biggest chance of actually having it. And if you want to pick up some regular models while you're at it, you just have to go up one floor. And talking about giant Gumpla floors, you might have read that in Ikebukuro, you can find the largest Gumpla sales floor in all of Japan. The legendary 7th floor of the Ikebukuro Yamada Denki. Unfortunately, this all changed when the pandemic attacked. I don't know when the floor moved, but at some point during the pandemic, it was moved a few buildings over and it's now just a shadow of its former self. Now, don't get me wrong, it is still a really nice place to visit when you're in Ikebukuro and you want some new Gunpla, but it's just that compared to what it was, it's no longer something special. It's no longer a single dedicated Gundam floor, instead it's now just a part of a larger sales floor. They also had do not take picture signs all over the place, which struck me as a bit counterintuitive when you have a giant Gundam statue there that is just begging to have its picture taken. Rest in peace 7th floor, you were my go to Gunpla place in Ikebukuro. Talking about things that are no longer the same, the Gundam Cafe, another unfortunate victim of the pandemic. In early 2022, all of them permanently closed with the exception of one straggler that can be found all the way in Yokohama. Tokyo's harbor. Located in the aptly named Gundam Factory Yokohama, this cafe comes complete with a nice variety of Gundam themed foods and drinks as well as a nicely stocked souvenir store. And of course, an amazing view of the main attraction there, the life-sized moving RX-78F00 Gundam. A marvel of Japanese engineering and a dedication to the Gundam franchise. If you're in Tokyo, you simply cannot not go here. Entrance to the whole area costs 1,650 yen, 12 US, and you'll also get a free RX 78F00 Gunpla. But if you also want to get up close and personal with the Gundam, you can pay an additional 3,300 yen, 24 US, for a tour that also goes up to the tower. Personally, I would say that it's totally worth it, but even if you don't, you can still get close to it on the ground and honestly seeing it in action is simply amazing no matter where you're standing. And while we're on the topic of statues, there is of course an even bigger one over at Odaiba. It might not move as much, but it is still a sight to behold. 
standing at almost 22 meters, this life-sized version of the Unicorn Gundam features a simplified transformation gimmick and it'll show this off at various points during the day, accompanied by an amazing light show and anime on the big screen. So it goes without saying that it is especially awesome at night. Just be sure that the thing isn't under maintenance if you're dying to see the thing transform. Although personally, I thought it was pretty cool to see an under maintenance headless unicorn. But whatever the state of the unicorn might be, there's always the accompanying Gundam base, where you can spend some hours looking at the various exhibits of the various Gundam anime, Gundam model kits and Gundam characters. Or you can spend your time deciding on which gunplay to buy because, true to its name, this truly is the base of Gundam things. You've got old models, new models, limited models, tools, a gachapon machine, and even a strict G store to buy some Gundam apparel. Your wallet will suffer. So after this, why not take a nice relaxing trip to Inagi, the birthplace of Kunio Okawara, and also where you'll find two of the less talked about Gundam statues. They might only be 3.6 meters tall, but the RX-72 and Charzaku duo do offer some things that the other Gundam statues don't. First of all, there is a Charzaku statue. That alone makes it three times better. And on top of that, these two are armed and ready for a fight, which isn't the case with the life size statues. They might have their built-in weaponry, but they don't have any of their handheld stuff. As for why these two are lesser known then, well, there's nothing else crazy going on with them. You've got a Gundam manhole, which is actually surprisingly easy to miss right next to the statue. In front of it, you've got a life-sized scope dog statue, which I actually found a bit more interesting on the virtue of it being life-sized. And then behind it, there is the tourist center where you can drink a coffee and buy some souvenirs. But don't expect anything grandiose here. The whole experience was much less busy compared to the other items on this list because Inagi is mostly a tranquil residential area. So while you're here, you might also want to take a walk from the Gundam statue to the Yatter 1 statue that is located at another station. Maybe it's just me, but walking around Inagi and taking in the view was almost as cool as seeing the statues. This really was one of those cases where the destination wasn't the important thing, but the journey. And let's end this list with a bang. Nakano Broadway. If your wallet isn't dead yet, this is absolutely going to finish it off. Just make sure that you don't go too early. Every store has its own opening hours, so while some websites might say that it opens up at 11 or even 10, if you go before 12, this is most of what you'll see. But hey, at least it is a cool liminal experience and it got me some good footage. Your experience might vary. But yeah, once it opens up, it really opens up. You'll often find Nakano Broadway touted as a replacement for Akihabara and the better, less known alternative. Personally, I don't really have a favorite and I would just say that both areas are awesome in their own way with each of them having a very distinct vibe. Akihabara is a flashy, touristy place that I don't just visit for shopping, but also just to hang out and kill some time. Nakano Broadway, on the other hand, is for hardcore otaku shopping. You've got a bunch of small stores selling a variety of things, and then you've also got a few bigger named stores like Jungle and Mandarake. If you want some manga, the Mandarake there has an absolutely enormous selection of all kinds of manga which is in fact one of the things that Nakano Broadway is known for. 
And if you want to get some new manga, there's also a huge new bookstore located right next to it. And if you couldn't find enough Gundam things in the plethora of mini stores, there's also a dedicated Mandarake Gundam store that is packed to the brim with both new and obscure Gundam things. Also, while Nakano Broadway might not have the legendary used panty vending machine, it does have a used lingerie gachapon machine. And those have been my top 10 places that you must visit as a Gundam fan when going to Tokyo. But let me tell you one final thing. Keep your eyes open wherever you go in Japan. Because Gundam is literally everywhere. Almost every secondhand store will have something Gundam related. And I even went to a barber shop once where there was a little gumpla display. Just like as part of the decor. So if you have some more recommendations of places you can visit in Tokyo, leave them down below. Because believe me, I know that there's a lot more than just these 10. Oh, and the reason I didn't mention Komike, Wanfes or other conventions is because they're timed events. But if you're in Japan when they take place, you should absolutely go to them. Even if you don't buy anything, it is quite the experience. So finally then, a big thanks to all of the places and stores on this list for allowing me to take pictures and record. Another big thanks to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day and I'll see you all next time.